questions and resolutions. This is the time for adjourn in memory. Are there any adjourn in memory? Senator Atkins. Colleagues, let's please give attention to Senator Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. I rise to adjourn in memory of former Senator, San Diego icon, and my dear friend, Lucy Calais. Lucy defined the very best in what it means to be a public servant. She came to the legislature at the age of 60, after what anyone would consider a full and remarkable career of public service, just some of her previous jobs. In World War II, she was uh, with the Office of Strategic Services as an analyst. She was an aide to Eleanor Roosevelt and attended the very first meeting of the United Nations in 1948. She was the highest ranking woman in the CIA. She was a founder of a nonprofit to encourage better relations with US and Mexico. And she's a former San Diego City Council member from Council District 8, the office that was also held decades later by my Democratic colleague from the 40th Senate District. She was a scholar having earned her PhD for her research on the Native American tribes of Southern California. We women in the legislature regard her as a mentor to all women seeking public office. Dee Dee Alpert, Chris Kehoe, Susan Davis, myself, many others, as well as dozens of staff who went on to careers in public service and in the private sector, had the privilege of learning how to be a true leader directly from her. Lucy constantly worked to break the glass ceiling, with one of her projects being the creation of a corporate registry to help identify women ready to serve on corporate boards, something we still need to work on. She served seven years in the assembly where she was far ahead of her time on many issues, environmental, consumer rights, energy, political reform. She was a maverick and an independent, never afraid to challenge the status quo, but always with her own quiet dignity that brought her the respect and the admiration from all quarters, regardless of political affiliation. In 1989, in her special election to the Senate, she became the first Catholic politician in America to be denied communion by her bishop based on her outspoken views supporting a woman's right to choose. It should be noted that other Catholic politicians, including those more famous and powerful, the Kennedys, the Cuomos, others, had taken similar positions and yet escaped sanction by their bishops, perhaps because they were men. So when the bishop took on Lucy, it was national news. Permission to... Uh, I can't say the word prop, show a photo. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this San Diego executive magazine showed a picture and the, the statement was, Lucy Calais, a San Diego maverick, declares her independence. Lucy accepted the bishop's decree with grace and without protest, simply continuing her campaign while a backlash in her favor secured her Senate victory. The numbers were skewed absolutely against her in that uh, race for Senate. She went on to serve seven distinguished years in the Senate, her last term as an independent, the only California legislator ever to leave their party while in office and be reelected as an independent. Term limits ended her legislative career, but not her public service. She returned to her passion of forging better relations with Mexico as a founder and a CEO of the nonprofit International Community Foundation in San Diego. That organization is now thriving and leading philanthropic efforts on both sides of the border. She continued to serve on many boards in San Diego, never slowed down. People have seen Lucy Calais for decades jogging and in her later years briskly walking all over San Diego. She was a San Diego landmark, right up there with Wales and the Chargers. She outlived them both. One notable quality about Lucy was her modesty and her generosity. She never dwelled on herself or her own accomplishments. She focused on the here, the now, and tomorrow, never letting her own aging slow her down. She finally gave up driving just last year when she discovered Uber could get her to the symphony or other appointments with less hassle and dirty looks from other drivers. She shunned the legislature's vanity license plates because she didn't want voters to know who was speeding and cutting them off on Interstate 8. She's received numerous awards, recognitions, including the California Women's Hall of Fame, and just this year she was named Miss San Diego by the Downtown Rotary of San Diego. She really was 
Ms. San Diego. Senator San Diego to many, but to most of us who knew and loved her, she was just Lucy. And that's how we will remember her, one of a kind. Lucy is survived by her two sons, Jay and Paul Kalia. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Atkins. We do have, I believe, a couple others who would like to speak uh, on behalf of our uh, late colleague uh, and icon, Senator Weso. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to rise to chime in and just to share a few personal experiences. Uh, we were just talking about uh, former Senator Kalea on Monday, and it was very sad to hear that she had passed on Tuesday. Uh, and again, we were talking her because she, about her because she was a, a very noteworthy woman, a woman that had made such an impact in our community uh, for many, many years, beyond her years as a, as a councilwoman, as a legislator. I first met Lucy Kalea when I was in the first grade. I was six years old. And she took time off of her campaign to come talk to my school. It was a Catholic school in her district called Our Lady School, and she was invited to speak. And I was, uh, as you can probably imagine, one of the students that kept raising his hand asking questions. And she was really nice about how she, she answered my questions and, and said, maybe one day you'll run for office. And, and I, I, that, has always, uh, that always stuck in my head. I'll never forget that, uh, that meeting where it wasn't every day that uh, a kid in school got to meet somebody running for office or, it, or even anybody in office. So because of her uh, doing that for my school, this is something that I always do when I'm invited to go to schools. I always go and I remember Lucy and what she did for me in inspiring me to get engaged civically at such an early age. And again, uh, I think uh, Senator Atkins' uh, representation of, of her life is, is just so accurate. Thank you, thank you for doing that, uh, uh, Senator. And uh, it's, it's a very sad day for us, but we have a, a beautiful, beautiful person with a wonderful life uh, that we can uh, celebrate. Uh, and thank you, uh, everyone, for this opportunity. Thank you, Senator Weso. Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to stand on behalf of the entire Women's Caucus um, and, in support of the resolution. And I often stand on this floor and, and, and talk about my experience as a young staffer here in the legislature, specifically for the Senate. Um, and I must say that um, as a young, young then woman staffer, to have had the opportunity to be in the presence of the very strong, diverse, dynamic members of the Women's Caucus during that era um, was, had a great and profound impression on me. And it, it just reminds me of the responsibility uh, the Women's Caucus members have today, because you never know who's watching. Um, I remember um, when um, Senator Clay had that experience uh, with her bishop. I was then working for another female Catholic member of the Senate uh, who also had taken um, um, critical votes in support of a woman's right to choose and had not had that experience with um, the, uh, the Archbishop from Los Angeles. And so I remember being in women's caucus meetings uh, and witnessing very colorful conversations between the two of them about their experience as, as, as women senators, as, as Catholics, in the early years when um, the Rose Room was very significant because there were very few women at that time that had yet to have been elected to the Senate. So I just wanted to stand um, and acknowledge the impression that she had on me as a young woman staffer. Um, and I'm so thrilled to have heard uh, and learned about um, the fullness of her life post-service in the California legislature. I just wanted to stand and add my voice to her recognition. Thank you, Senator Mitchell. Any other comments on behalf of this extraordinary woman who was, uh, I think, a role model to so many of us and an inspiration to all of us? With that, uh, please extend our condolences to her family, to the community, uh, and uh, I think it's an honor to be adjourning in her memory. With that, any other motions to adjourn in memory?